This talk is about my experiences implementing the HOMA transport protocol as a Linux kernel module. HOMA is a new transport protocol developed by Benham Montessori in his PhD work. Its main claim to fame is that it eliminates network congestion, which results in dramatic improvements in tail latency. The work by Benham, along with Yilong Li, demonstrated excellent results both in simulations and in a user implementation in the RAM cloud storage system. HOMA's performance is so compelling that I believe it should replace TCP for the use in the data center. This will not be easy given TCP's entrenched status, but I've decided to pursue this until either it happens or I learn why it's impossible. As a first step, I decided to implement HOMA in the Linux kernel as a personal programming project. I did this partly as a test to see if the original results would reproduce in a production setting, and also to create an implementation that could be used for real applications in order to encourage adoption. The paper has three takeaways. First, the Linux implementation confirms the earlier results. HOMA does indeed eliminate network congestion at downlinks, and it provides order of magnitude better tail latency than either TCP or DCTCP. Second, the battle for performance is shifting from network congestion to software overheads. This paper characterizes those overheads. I will discuss two specific problems, both of which stem from the need to distribute protocol processing across multiple cores. Third, software is losing the battle against increasing network speeds. If we want to take full advantage of high-speed data center networks, we need to make two major changes. First, transport protocols must move to special purpose NIC hardware. And second, we have to replace TCP. HOMA was designed for use in data centers with an RPC style of communication. Because of this, HOMA's API is different from TCP. It is message oriented and has no notion of connection. HOMA is designed around RPCs, not connections. The HOMA API is summarized at the bottom of the slide. It consists of three new kernel calls, one for sending request messages, another for sending replies, and a third for receiving either requests or replies. A single HOMA socket can be used to communicate with any number of peers. Any number of concurrent RPCs can be outstanding on a socket at once, and concurrent RPCs may complete in any order. This slide is a terse summary of the HOMA protocol. The driving idea is to get the lowest possible latency for short messages, especially at the tail and under high network load. To do this, HOMA has two key features. First, it implements SRPT rather than fair sharing. That is, it gives highest priority to the message with the fewest remaining bytes to transmit. It turns out that this also benefits long messages because it results in run to completion behavior, which is superior to the round robin behavior produced by TCP's fair sharing. To implement SRPT, HOMA takes advantage of the priority queues provided by modern switches. This allows short messages to bypass longer messages that have been queued. The second major feature of HOMA is that it implements congestion control at receivers, not at senders as in TCP. HOMA senders can only transmit the first few packets of each message unilaterally. For the remaining packets, they must wait for explicit grants from the receiver. This allows receivers to limit buffer buildup and to prioritize shorter messages. Receivers determine the priorities used for incoming packets. See the paper for details. An important aspect of HOMA is that it allows packets to be received in any order. This makes it much easier to balance load effectively, both in the network and in host software. For example, packet spraying can be used in networks rather than flow consistent routing. HOMA Linux is a kernel module, which means it can be dynamically loaded into Linux kernels. It does not require any changes to the Linux code base, and the sources are freely available on GitHub. I don't consider this a research prototype. I've tried to create a production quality implementation, and I think the current level of maturity is high enough to run real applications. I'm happy to fix bugs and provide support for anybody who tries to use it. This slide compares the performance of HOMA Linux with TCP, running one of the workloads from the Montessori paper on a 40 node cluster at high load. Each node is both sending and receiving 20 gigabits per second on a 25 gig network. The graph shows latency as a function of message size. 
the y-axis displays slowdown, which is a normalized measure of latency. The slowdown for a message is the actual round trip time for that message, divided by the time for HOMA with messages of that size in an unloaded system. So larger is worse and 1.0 is ideal. The graph shows TCP in green and HOMA in blue with separate curves for median and 99th percentile latency. HOMA is better than TCP for all message lengths. If you compare latencies for short messages, HOMA is 7.5x faster at the median and 19x faster at the 99th percentile. This slide provides additional performance data. First, it shows additional workloads from the Montessori paper, ranging from W2 with the smallest message sizes to W5 with the largest messages. Second, it also includes measurements of DC TCP in brown. HOMA is faster than TCP and DC TCP for every message size in every workload. You can see that because the blue HOMA curves are below the others. For small messages, HOMA is three to eight times faster at the median and seven to 83 times faster at the 99th percentile. In fact, HOMA's P99 latency, that's the dark blue curve in the graphs, it's significantly better than the medians for TCP and DC TCP almost everywhere. HOMA effectively eliminates network congestion. To see this, I analyzed nanosecond scale traces of P99 round trips, and I couldn't find any evidence of network congestion for HOMA, whereas it was clearly present for TCP. See the paper for additional measurements. <clears throat> Even though HOMA is far better than TCP or DC TCP, its performance is still far from optimal. For example, our user space implementation of HOMA in RamCloud has 7x lower tail latency than the kernel implementation. With HOMA, tail latency is now entirely due to software overheads. One of the biggest challenges is software load balancing. Network speeds are increasing rapidly while CPU speeds are not. So even with 25 gig networks, a single core can't handle all of the packet processing. The work has to be distributed across several cores, and things will get worse with faster networks. Load balancing creates inefficiencies, and I'm going to discuss two of them in the next slides. Now, you might think the solution is to move transport protocols to user space in order to get better efficiency, but I'm going to argue that this will not solve the problems. The first problem with load balancing is that it results in hotspots. When a packet arrives in a Linux system, it passes through three stages, each of which can potentially run on a different core. The first stage is the device driver, which collects input packets into batches. The second stage is the protocol stack, which includes both IP and HOMA. The third stage is the destination application thread. Unfortunately, the core for each of these stages is chosen by a different load balancer. For example, the driver core is chosen by the NIC using receive side scaling and the application core is chosen by the Linux thread scheduler. The load balancers all run independently, so conflicts are inevitable. In this example, a long message and a short message are processed concurrently using different cores for the driver and protocol stack. However, the application thread receiving the short message happens to be scheduled on the same core as the core that does protocol processing for the long message. Protocol processing takes priority and can run for bursts of hundreds of microseconds, during which time the application can't process the short message. The paper describes how I was able to eliminate some of these conflicts, but others still remain, and they are the main source of P99 latency for HOMA. Another problem with load balancing is that it makes everything slower, at the median as well as the tail. This graph shows CDFs of round trip latency for short messages measured under two different conditions. The green curve shows the best case, where a single client thread communicates with a single server. In this case, all of the protocol processing on each side is done on a single core. Median round trip time is about 15 microseconds. Unfortunately, this scenario is not realistic. The blue curve shows more realistic conditions where there are many clients talking to many servers under load. In this case, the load is balanced across many cores. Median latency is now 50 microseconds, more than three times worse. 
To find out what's going on, I analyzed nanosecond scale traces. It turns out there's no single culprit. Every phase of software processing takes two to three times as long. It's as if the clock speed dropped by two to three X. My hypothesis is that load balancing results in more cache coherency traffic. However, I have not measured cache performance explicitly. It's also worth noting that most published performance measurements measure like the green curve. However, from this graph, it's clear that those results are not meaningful. Going forward, if we want to achieve the performance potential of our networks, we need to find a way to reduce software overheads. One possibility being explored by many groups is to bypass the kernel and move protocol processing to user space. At first glance, this appears to produce significant benefits. These systems provide 5 to 10x better performance than Homo Linux for P50 latency, for P99 latency, and also for small message throughput. However, most of these systems are oversimplified to the point of being unrealistic. For example, they don't do meaningful load balancing, and they use workloads that are not representative. Now, to be sure, the Linux kernel imposes unusually high overheads, but many of those overheads will occur for user-level implementations as well. There's one user space protocol implementation that does address all of these factors. It's Google's SNAP system, and it's used in production. SNAP is more efficient than Homo Linux, but only by about a factor of two. For example, Homo Linux will consume about 17 cores to drive a 100 gigabit network at 80% utilization. SNAP will consume seven to 14 cores, depending on which load balancer you use. This is better, but SNAP still pays a steep price. SNAP also appears to lose efficiency under load balancing. SNAP throughput per core drops <clears throat> by 3.5 to 7x in the presence of load balancing, which is even worse than what I observed with Homo Linux. My conclusion is that moving the transport to user space is not enough of an improvement to get us where we need to be. Do you really want to waste 10 cores just to drive a 100 gig network? The only viable alternative I can see is to move transports to the NIC. I don't have time to discuss this topic in detail, but it will probably involve a new NIC architecture. See the paper for details. Finally, I think it's time to recognize that virtually every aspect of TCP's design is wrong for the data center. TCP results in large numbers of long-lived connections, which create high overheads and make a NIC implementation all but impossible. TCP is stream-oriented, which is awkward for RPCs and results in head-of-line blocking, where short requests get stuck behind long ones. TCP uses fair sharing instead of SRPT. That results in high latency. TCP manages congestion from senders. That requires buffer occupancy to detect congestion, and that in turn guarantees high latency under load. And finally, TCP requires in-order packet delivery, which interferes with load balancing both in the network and in software. Uh, overall, I don't see a path to high performance that includes TCP. So to wrap up, Homo Linux provides dramatically better performance than TCP and DCTCP, and this confirms earlier results. Homo eliminates congestion as a significant performance concern, but it exposes a new problem, software overheads. Eliminating these is the next challenge. If we want high performance data center networking in the future, we will need to make some radical changes. Transports need to move to the NIC, and we need to get beyond TCP. Finally, I'm very interested in working with anyone who'd like to try out Homo Linux, especially if this could lead to production use. Thanks for your attention. I will now materialize from virtual to physical and take your questions.